Hello there, I'm Black Bright News and welcome to my channel. If it's the first time you're passing through, I tend to give my opinion on news items, legislation, immigration status, and I kind of do a little research or something pops up on my phone. And if I think it's interesting, I'll give my two pence worth on it. Sometimes my subscribers agree, sometimes they disagree, but it's we live in a world full of differences, so it's okay. It's all gravy. Um, so before I start on um, the video today, I just wanted to answer one of my subscribers who asked me why I change my wigs every day. Not why do I change my hair every day, but why do I change my wigs every day? Well, I guess it's because I can. And I think that we are raised in a kind of society which suggests that you have to be consistent in order to be stable. You have to be operate in a certain way. You have to wear certain things. You have to behave in a certain way in order to be accepted. Well, in case of my myself and my appearance, I'm in charge of that. So I just do what I want with it. And whatever feels good to me when I wake up, that's what I go with. I even have people commenting on my background. You can't see my background anymore, so you can't criticise my statues. Anyway, um, I hope today um, finds you all in good health and in good spirits. And I wanted to talk about Piers Morgan. And apparently he's lost hundreds of thousands. Well, Good Morning Britain has lost hundreds and thousands of viewers since he stormed off. <coughs> since he stormed off the set a couple of weeks ago, I think it is now, time flies so fast. I don't know if it was last week or the week before, but we all know it's been all over the papers that he stormed off because of what the weatherman, Alex Beresford, said about his relationship with Meghan Markle. So why is it that hundreds of thousands of people have stopped watching Good Morning Britain and just because Piers is not there. I mean, he's constantly criticised, isn't he? He's called rambunctious, arrogant, rude, narcissistic, chauvinistic, sexist, self-serving, intrusive, opinionated, manipula manipulative, he oversteps boundaries, and yet everybody jumps ship when he's not around. Is it because... They see something in him that they see in themselves and they have that kind of familiarity with him, albeit that they don't like it. None of us like the dark sides of our character, but there must be something in Piers Morgan that gets the adrenaline going. People are outraged by him. They, they complain about him. I mean, Ofcom got 41,000 complaints when he dissed Meghan Markle about the mental um, issues and claimed that she was Pinocchio princess. You know, so we, there's a lot of people out there who say, oh, I can't stand him, you know, I don't like him, and he's this and he's that, and yet they watch him because he's addictive. And because, like I said, he reminds them a part of themselves that they keep hidden. A lot of us would like to be obnoxious. If there wasn't, if we wasn't going to be rejected or if we wasn't going to, we didn't have to watch ourselves so much. For some reason, he has permission to be totally himself. And when he doesn't want to be himself, he storms off. And I think he did himself um, a good service by walking off. Because maybe if he had retaliated or reacted or responded immediately to what Alex Beresford was saying, he could never have come back from that. Because it's more than likely he might have said, how dare you, someone like you, a weatherman, how dare you embarrass me on in public on TV? And he probably would have been quite arrogant and it could have, everything could have spilled over. He might have even said, other things, you know, to show how he was really feeling. But he used self-control. And all he's done by walking off is leave a lot to our imagination. We can imagine all sorts. We can assume all sorts by him walking off that stage. And indeed, newspapers and the media have made a field day of it. You know, they're all kind of making these assumptions of why he's walked off 
did he get kicked off or what is the situation? Maybe, who knows, sometimes it's a ploy to get rid of him to see what the reaction is like. And then when they see hundreds of thousands of people who are not watching Good Morning Britain, bring him back and get even more um, viewers. Who knows? You know, the media are very clever, you know. So we do not know. I mean, I know by him getting up and walking off, that wasn't planned. I mean, there's no, not unless they talked about it beforehand, but I, from Alex Beresford's expression, that wasn't pre-planned, him approaching that situation in that way. But Piers Morgan, you are, he's like Marmite, you either hate him or you love him. That is how it is. And most people, even though they disapprove of him, they still are addicted to him. They're addicted to him in the morning. They want to see what he's going to say. And I think most of the time, so it's a kind of a sadistic kind of interest. Because some people watch people because they want to see if they're going to slip up. They scrutinise everything that they're saying so they can get something over them. That's what some people do. You know, they haven't got anything better to do than to sit watching people like peers or maybe vloggers to see where they're going to slip up. Are they going to say something incriminating? Can they get them for something? Are they going to dig themselves into a hole? It's a very masochistic mentality, but I think that is why people are addicted to Piers Morgan. Is he going to put his foot in it this time? You know, it's a bit like um, that guy, what's his name? Oh, begins with a B, Bor Borat, that's it, and he oversteps boundaries, people watch and wait and see when he's going to slip up, people have a morbid curiosity for people making mistakes, for people getting other people into trouble, for people um, putting their neck on the line, they have a morbid curiosity, and I think that is what it is, nothing more, when all those people leave um, Good Morning Britain, all those viewers, it's like, oh, there's nothing to entertain us now. Who can we watch? Everybody else is boring. Everybody else is towing the line. We don't want to see anybody who's towing the line. We don't want to see anybody who's conforming. We want to see something different. We want to see something real. We want to see somebody who's expressing themselves in a way that's going to get my um, get my auntie up. And I think that's what happens. People need it, especially like during lockdown and COVID and all that. They need something to keep them interested. Piers Morgan, regardless, love him or hate him, he keeps people interested, right or wrong. Anyway, I think um, I wrote down some. I wrote down some um, notes. Um, too easy. Is it too easy to blame Alex Beresford for him walking off? I think that's. He's just a pawn. He's just an easy target. But Alex did touch a nerve because, you know, as arrogant as Piers Morgan is, he's he's very, very protective of himself. And I don't know how many of you know this, but he lost his father when he was 11 months. So he had to deal with his mother's reaction to the loss of her husband and his father. And sometimes children pick up you know, the grieving process. Well, a lot of them, it's natural to pick up the grieving process of their parents if one has died and the mother is left looking after the child. So when he was growing up, he grew up with an adverse childhood experience. And maybe that's why he's overprotective. Maybe that's why he's hypersensitive. That is Maybe that is why he thinks I don't give a toss. Sometimes people have had tragic backgrounds. That makes them more rebellious. I mean, even when if you think about Harry, he's quite rebellious, but look at his background, he lost his mother. So you reach a point where when you lose what you love, you kind of think, you know, what else can I lose? I've got nothing to lose apart from being myself and choosing the path I want to choose. So what ha apparently um, he was a good friend of Meghan Markle. You know, they used to talk on the phone, they used to email and everything. And then I think on the eve of her meeting Prince Harry, um, 
they'd gone to a pub for a drink and he had to mention they had dirty martinis. But anyway, um, so on the eve of him, of Meghan meeting Harry, she ghosted him after that. And, you know, it's not surprising. You can't blame her. I mean, he's a big, he's in the media, big time. Newspaper reporter. You know, he, she, she, she'd have to be very careful about what she said. After When you're associated with royalty, you can't talk freely. So how can you engage with someone when you can't speak freely and you're worried whether or not they're going to print something that you say or if you slip up? So she ghosted him, which wasn't nice. What she should have done, really, was to say, look, Piers, you know, Harry and I, we are going into a relationship now. It's going to be very, very difficult for me to be open with you. So therefore, I'm going to have to kind of distance myself a little. But don't please don't take it personally. I'm sure you understand. I think if Piers had got some kind of response from her, something, he wouldn't be so bitter now. He's like a woman scorned, only he's a man scorned. And he feels betrayed because he said she was beautiful. He was impressed by her. He said Harry had really got a winner. This is what he was saying about Meghan Markle before she ghosted him. He had nothing but admiration for her. But it all went down the window when she ghosted him and he just felt hurt. And that is what you're seeing on the screen. You're seeing somebody who is hurt because now she is so big and famous and he's not a part of that. And even though he wanted to be a part of the wedding and he wasn't even a part of that. So he feels hurt. He feels rejected. And rejection is not a nice thing. Whether it's from a lover or whether it's from a friend, when somebody goes to you, it's not nice. And it wasn't a pleasant thing to do. So now, you know, he, he's getting his own back. He's getting his revenge. He's now in a position where he can slag her off if he wants. And there's nothing she can do about it. And he's more or less teaching her a lesson. You play me. You don't mess with me. Or else your future is water. Anyway. Uh, Alex, uh, no. In 2017, Piers said in the Daily Mail column, hearty congratulations, Harry. You picked a real keeper. She's very beautiful. She's intelligent. He's really impressed. So he did originally have nothing but good to say about her but like I said it's her behavior towards him the re well I'd have to say the rejection of him why he's turned and that's why Alex Beresford touched a nerve when he said you know just because she di ditched you um, she hasn't said one bad word about you but you keep blasting her and I think that is what it is it's like when a woman has been rejected She'll still try to find, she'll still bad mouth the husband. People who have been abandoned, sometimes they will still bad mouth the, the person who abandoned them. Because abandonment or rejection or ghosting, it's all a part of the same thing. You know, it hurts. And I think what we see on TV or what we saw on national display was a hurt person. He was really hurt that Meghan cut him off. And I don't know if it, I mean, he's very egotistical. So it probably damaged his ego. He probably thought he was going to be a part of it all. But there again, why would he want to be a part of it all? Would it have been just to sensationalise their life? You know, you know, maybe he, it was a lost opportunity. He thought he had an opportunity to be a part of that family and have an inside scoop. And it didn't work that way. I'm just, purpose, I'm just, presupposing this is just a hypothesis just my opinion so um anyway so i said I, I you know my opinion is that he's he was he felt scorned he felt embarrassed he felt humiliated and he did not know how to respond in a civil way given the platform he was on on good morning britain um so I think walking off, well, I'm just looking at my notes now, shows self-control. He values his job. Walking off leaves it to our imagination. And it's much more powerful. It's like silence is powerful. Walking off is powerful. We can deduce what we may from him walking off. Um, 
And he'll probably be even more popular now. Can you imagine his comeback? Everyone will be cheering, regardless of what he said about Meghan. That will all go, people have short memories. I mean, it's only because the news keeps reminding us of what happened and the reaction. And, you know, all of this is, I don't know if it's some sort of distraction from what's going on with COVID or whatever. I don't know. But the fact of the matter is, it's like a light relief from here, from watching COVID and deaths and cases every day. This is a light relief. So people, have kind of, their, their focus has moved from COVID to Meghan and to Harry and to Piers Morgan and to now um, Prince Philip is out of hospital. 99 years old. My goodness. And he's st it looks like he's still dyeing his hair, bless him. So, um, so is his attack on Meghan revenge for dropping him as a friend after meeting? He said to in the Daily Mail, but she's now finding out the hard way that if you try to play the royals and the royal household like she played me, or like she played people like me, You'll come up against a system you can never beat. Those are strong words. And he's talking about the media. You can't beat the media. The media is so powerful. When they put all those headlines, you know, Meghan will die just like Diana. And you see all these big headlines all over the newspapers. You know. Nobody questions whether or not they're false or true. If you see it, it's it automatically, instinctively, you believe what you say is true. The media cannot lie. That is the way people have been led to th believe. So they don't think about the media can exaggerate, the media can omit, the media can manipulate. They don't think that. They see something on the front page of the news and they'll say, well, if it wasn't true, they couldn't print it. But if you think about those alleged photographs that Piers Morgan put up about the Iraq torture, apparently they were supposed to be forgeries. I mean, he denies that they were, but he lost his job over it in 2004 at the um, Daily Mirror. So, you know... Editors can do, that's why they're called editors. They're called editors because they can edit anything they want. And what makes a good editor is to edit something and make it seamlessly seem real. That's their job. And he was one of the top editors. He knew how to recreate a scenario and make it convincing. And he did it in a way that couldn't be challenged. Yeah, people could accuse him, but they couldn't prove anything. But yeah, he lost his job over that, and apparently there was a big stink. Anyway, um, so what else have I got here? In 1996, he produced a controversial action surrender, front page about England versus Germany, Germany's football match. So he likes to stoke the fire. And so when you think about what I was saying is that when you think about his background, his loss, um, it's not to elicit sympathy, but it's to try to understand where that character comes from. That character that we see comes from hurt. It comes from pain. It comes from anger. It comes from repression. That's what we see on TV. He's not a happy person. He behaves as though he is, but he's not. Because if he was, he wouldn't, you know, he's obviously not a very forgiving person either. And I think when you can't forgive, you have revenge in your heart. And I think that's what we see, that hurt and that pain, you know, maybe, you know, not only, and this all linked, you know, his father left him, you know, his, he lost his father. And then any friendship that you lose after that, any, any friendship that you value, it's kind of linked to the loss that you had in your childhood on a subconscious level. So he's obviously, 
linking that abandonment or that ghosting to the loss of his father and whatever other losses he's had in his life. So what we see up there, you know, I don't think we should take it too seriously. I think, you know, if he comes back, and he probably will, you know, we just have to take him on the chin. He's not going anywhere. And like he says, he's not going anywhere. It's like Trump. It doesn't matter what you do wrong. Well, I mean, he's booted out now. But it didn't really matter that he was gro groping women on a bus and talking so derogatory, derogatorily about women. They still put him in as president of the United States. So it's not the bad that you do. It's how you get through it and how you can turn people around. And I think that's what life is about. Some of us think we have to toe the line in order to be accepted. We don't. You just need to be true, true to yourself. It's probably best to do it in a respectful way. But as we have seen, you don't have to be even respectful. But it's got to do with your own integrity and your own sense of value how you present yourself to the world. And I think that's all I've got to say about um, Piers Morgan. Yes, you either love him or you like or you hate him. One thing Piers illustrates is that is a disacknowledged dark side of all of us which although makes us dumbfounded and outraged, it also makes him reluctantly alluring. That was just a thought, you know, like I said before, you know, we all have a side of us that we hide. Um, and I think what Piers brings out is that side that sometimes we repress. And so he kind of makes us feel as though it's okay. It's okay. It's okay not to be perfect every day. It's okay to have an outburst. It's okay to lose your, lose your, lose your, uh, lose it for a little while. Anyway, that's all for now. Bye bye.